I've talked to a lot of people, and I think most people are more interested in intelligent aliens than they are in mi alien microbes or blobs. We want to talk to something that has a head and a mouth. But what are heads? Would aliens really have such things as heads? How common are heads in the universe? Well, many life forms on Earth have heads. It's an elephant and a naked mole rat, a zebrafish, tuatara, and a dog. Heads seem to be common and widespread on Earth. Since heads are common on Earth, shouldn't heads be common among aliens? Doesn't that follow? Yes, they should, says E.T. For example, most TV and Hollywood aliens have heads. And, uh, but there's something wrong. If I agreed with you, we'd both be wrong. Now, for example, look at this logic. Many life forms speak English. English is common and widespread. Most TV and Hollywood aliens speak English. So, since English is common on Earth, shouldn't English be common among aliens? Yes, English is the lingua franca of the galaxy. <laughs> but what if this logic is wrong? Let's look at some data to try to sort this out. Here is a phylogenetic tree of all life. Bacteria, archaea, and the eukaryotes, our friends. Here are the fungi, the plants, and the animals, and this group are the multicellular things. Let's look more carefully here. Here's the blow up. And then between the points of the end of the red arrow and the end of the blue arrow, is a billion years of animal evolution. This is the time period during which heads evolved on Earth. No other branch of the tree of life evolved heads. So let's look carefully at this. Here, here is one billion years of animal evolution. And in blue triangle, that's where there are heads. But heads are not always the same. They're not all created equal. Here are the bone-headed things, also known as vertebrates. And here are the invertebrate heads with soft heads. Let's look at another phylogenetic tree, same kind of thing. But here are the vertebrates with bone heads, and right here are invertebrate soft-headed things. But in fact, oh, the nematodes are right here. Don't forget the nematodes because they make up about 80% of all individual animals on Earth. So there are lots and lots of invertebrates here. If you walk down the street, you grow up as a human being, you get surrounded by other vertebrates, i.e. other human beings. You might have a dog, a vertebrate. You go to the zoo, you see an elephant as a vertebrate. You see a mouse, a cat. They're all vertebrates, a frog, a fish. These are vertebrates, so you get the impression that there are lots and lots of vertebrates and only a few small, insignificant invertebrate worms. But if you talk to a biologist, they'll say, this picture is wrong. If you really did a sample of th life forms on Earth, you would get this picture. Many, many more invertebrates and only a few vertebrates. And in fact, in many ways, vertebrates are a type of invertebrate. Let's look at the phylogenetic tree to show what this means. Here are the invertebrates. And you can see that vertebrates evolved from invertebrates. In fact, you could say that vertebrates are a kind of invertebrate. I like to say that. Now, what's important about this understanding of the origin of heads is because right here at the base of that tree, there is one species that evolved into all of the invertebrates, and that one species had a kind of proto-head. It was the only species on the planet which had a head. No other species that had lived at the same time had a head or evolved into heads. So heads, in some way, are a unique, special, species-specific type of thing. In fact, you could say the same thing about the vertebrates. Right here at the blue dot, that's where the first bony-headed creature lived. It was a single species that his head got bonier and bonier and evolved into and radiated into all the vertebrates we know and love today. The point is that almost any feature, especially heads, are monophyletic in the sense that if you go back in a time machine, you will find only one quirky specific species which had that feature, had a head. That seems to suggest that heads may not be common among aliens. We started by asking, what are heads and where did they come from? 
we found out that about 800 million years ago, there was a single species with a soft proto-head that evolved and radiated into all the species that have heads today on Earth. This singular origin of heads on Earth convinces some of us that if aliens exist, they probably won't have heads and they probably don't speak English.